that guy. But basically, what you missed, guys, is Kai was asking uh, what I thought the score was going to be. I think Titan are going to win it. Um, you know, I think a lot of people will predict that. Hopefully, I, I shouldn't get too much hate in the chat for predicting that Titan were going to take it. But after all, oh, at the end of the day, this is CS. Anything can happen. So if Titan do lose this now, after I've just called them winning, it's going to be another hashtag blame the uh, Chewy spam, which we haven't seen for quite a while, actually. No, we haven't. Here we go. We've got Disturbed and Reflex. They're both, in fact, the Finns are going to stack three players on the B bomb site and Titan are pretty much the three of them are going to go through apps and Khan already expected them to be there trying to pre-fire he knows they're going to come his way and are we finally going to see someone rotate? No, the Finns still adamant on keeping three players on the B bomb site and finally Disturbed is going to rotate back round but I think I think Encore know exactly what Titan are doing Titan are falling back to the bottom for Banana it's going to be first blood for Reflex good kill from him as Kenny S leads the charge as they go up Banana they need to get this bomb down with a minute to go Khan is reading Scream like an open book he knows exactly where he is or I think I may have jinxed it and Chewy, what is this from Titan? One second they're going A the next second they're changing their mind uh, it, it's like it's just a massive maze well that that first pick there on mbk was absolutely huge because taking him down then we saw kenny s starting to push up towards banana but he instantly got flashed which just stopped that push straight away then they attracted all of their attention over towards a and by that time we saw another encore player rotate from b back over towards a as we see though, Kenny has actually been able to make his way down into pit, so he's got that first headshot down to Khan. He's going to be able to get another one. Has to reload his block, unfortunately, just at the wrong second. It's a three on three, and here we go. Kenny S going absolutely massive. That's Zarte and Natu down as well, and that could have already been one of the plays of the entire match here in the first round. That was huge stuff we just got there. The bomb's been planted as well, and what looked like a great situation for the CT side earlier on has completely turned against them, and this is showing why Titan are Titans, forgive the pun. Uh, that was a phenomenal first round there. Kenny S, good plays. Yeah, top stuff from Kenny S, good old King Kenny. And even though Inferno was a CT-sided map, obviously it's gone through quite a lot of changes uh, in recent in recent years. But it's not rare to see the, the uh, pistol round go in favour of the terrorists because we know how overpowered the pistols are on uh, on CSGO, we know how overpowered the Glock is and as, ti as, uh, as Titans, as terrorists, all you need to do is buy a bit of armour, rush somewhere and uh, use the Glocks for what they're good at. So there we go, opening frag on Banana, leaving Reflex in the B-bomb site all by himself. And I think Titan are trying to slow it down. I think they want to pretend they're faking like they did in the last pistol round, but now Reflex, well, he'll definitely know they're coming his way. That's a good kill from Reflex. Gets aim punched as Kenny S gets the return frag. And it's going to take something special here for Encore to really turn this one around. But Disturbed does have the... the, the blah, 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 blah. He does have the all overpowered CZ75. Couldn't capitalize on it, leaving Khan all by himself. And at four versus one, it's, it's going to take something... Something miraculous for Khan to, to pull this one out of the bag. Oh yeah, definitely indeed. And one thing that I like about you know t teams like this with Titan and everything, and obviously most teams do it nowadays, but we saw right at the start existence getting knocked down to 11 HP, somehow being able to survive. But what he did is he swapped away his Galil and picked up just the, I think it was a yeah. simple Caesar 7-5, just to give obviously that player with more HP more of a chance of getting kills. So uh, yeah, simple you know tactics like that. It's not anything too special and too unordinary, but still it's it good makes to a big see, difference. You know, teams. Yeah, it does. It does. Mm. It's still good to see teams doing that. But here we go. We're into round number three. Still not anything two crazy weapons coming in. We've still got NBK with that shotgun in hand, a couple of AKs and a couple of Gilils. And of course because Encore have really not been able to do any much, they only got one frag in that last round I do believe onto NBK. Uh, they're not going to be able to buy up early here. So still pistols in the hands for them. And here we go, as we say, round number three. Let's see where they're going to push to start things off. We can't really underestimate anybody who's got some of those pistols in their hand because they still can do damage. As soon as I say that, though, Kenny S is going to stop Natu in his tracks instantly from the arch side there. Wow. And Kenny S gets a second headshot. Kenny S, what's going on? This man's shot is just absolutely on point today. Scream looking the other way there, of course. Just covering that cross is going to find a player over towards bottom apartment. Both of them backing up. Scream does get to there, Khan, and suddenly Disturbed just comes out the door absolutely nowhere. Is Scream going to finish things off? That's three frags in a row for him. 3-0 is going to be your score. And now finally Encore are going to be able to buy, and this is important for them to start getting that ball rolling here on the CT side and getting that first round on the board. Yeah, and a lot of people questioned the existence, questioned the Titan side when they decided to...
drop Shoxy, and uh, obviously they didn't drop Shoxy, Shoxy left, but then when they decided to bring Kenny S back, and to be fully honest, Titan haven't really been playing to their full potential in recent weeks, but maybe, maybe they've been saving it for this all-important tournament, and maybe G3 next week, so if there's any time, any perfect time, for Titan to really step their game up, it's now, and talking about Kenny S, he might be able to get a frag here, he does have reflex to the right of him, in fact he might be MBK in the Natural Born Killer to do what Natural Born Killer Killers do best. Oh, wall bang and headshot from MBK, and it's just far too easy for Titan at the moment. We're we're not seeing Encore go aggressive. I like to see CTs, especially after buying up, push down Banana, take control of Banana. They're giving Titan too much freedom, and granted that Titan have been poor in recent weeks, they've obviously been practicing, and you can't you. It, Poor or not, these are still top quality players. Some of the best players this game has. And let's see what Smith can do here. I think he should be able to drop Disturbed. And there we go. Easy kills, easy life for the Frenchies. And they're just going to try and hunt down the last few fins. And I think they are going to. There we go. 4-0. And the CTs, Chewy, they're on the more expensive side. Despite it being the more favoured side. And they're going to find themselves ecoing yet again. Yeah, and once again, they only actually managed to get one frag in that entire round, and especially considering the fact that they had that Arsenal topped up again with those M4s, and I think they even had an AWP in play as well. That is really, really demoralising for them to lose all of those and be right back to basics with pistols. And One thing that I found interesting there, actually, is I do believe that Titan hardly pushed into that B-bomb site with any flashes or, or anything whatsoever. They just got those two pit, quick piss, uh, picks, sorry, yeah. Kenny S and, uh, and MDK getting them, and then just smoked off CT and everything, because you would expect... Um, you know, and it was just the most standard B push I've probably seen in quite a while already. You know, we've only just finished analysing that last round, and there's only one player left alive here for Encore, so it is going to be 5 0 to Titan. There we go, confirmation of that. And once again, nobody from Titan having to rebuy here, so they are looking very, very good indeed. And of course, with Inferno, in a lot of people's opinions, being a CT favoured map, mm -hmm. the more rounds that Titan can get on the board here, the better it's going to be for them. Once again, Encore have been able to buy though, and now it is, you know, really crucial for them to get this round on the board because as soon as they get that ball rolling you could see them starting to come back into this game. Yeah I want to start seeing Encore actually go aggressive, start pushing second mid, maybe push apps, get to the bottom of banana, but Titan, credit where it's due, they're not really allowing them to do that, they have no idea that MBK is in fact behind the logs, Autodirector didn't catch it, but we did, MBK with the headshot, fortunately, Reflex manages to eradicate him, but Titan, on the least favoured side, still have this all important man advantage, they're in the A bomb site, they just need to plant the bomb, they need to get rid of that Encore player in Khan, he spotted Kenny S doesn't miss from there and I don't know Chewy. I don't know but they're letting Titan walk into the bomb site. I don't feel like they're they're pushing them enough. I don't feel like they're they're stopping Titan from doing what Titan does best. They're giving the players free roles. They're telling them, yeah, push up mid. Yeah, get into apps. Yeah, push up second mid. Yeah, get up Banana, we don't care, we're just going to play from on top of the bomb site. And even though against certain opposition that can work, Titan, with Existence as their leader, they're one of those drilled sides. Existence is one of those players who'll stay up all night if he has to, to find that perfect flash, to find the perfect smoke, to allow them to pop flash Banana, so that they make sure they get control of Banana before any pushing CTs can do. So even though it looks like Encore are are basically the products of their own poor Counter-Strike, mm. Titan, credit where it's due, are actually contributing to it as well. I'm just having a look at the scores actually, and overall, in six rounds, there's only been six deaths for Titan, so that basically means, obviously to put it into perspective, uh, only one member of Titan has died each round, really, to kind of put it into perspective, if you see it in that way, and that is frankly not good enough, especially as we say on the CT side here, or, or Inferno, and with so much on the line here, yeah, okay, it's a best of three, so maybe not quite as much is, you know, important on this first game, if then you can bring it back, but this is Titan we're on about here, if you go one map down against these guys, and they're just steamrolling you, like Titan are doing now already, it's going to be very difficult to bring two ra you know, two maps in a row, but you know, we'll see. You can see those flashes starting to go down towards Banana now, so it looks like Encore is starting to try and get that control on Banana, and that's a very big first kill down to Kenny has to try and do something. But as you can see, MBK has been able to push so far up, and it's not worked once again here for Encore. MBK gets two, eventually Disturbed has to smoke from the site just to stop him in his tracks, because he could have just run straight in there and had no issues whatsoever. 
Eventually, MBK does decide to move back, though. He has picked up that Kenny, uh, that orc which Kenny S dropped after being killed earlier on. And now we're going to see the seventh round with 46 seconds left on the clock in an even three versus three situation. So let's see where Titan are going to push. This would be big here for Encore if they can take this one. I have a feeling after getting those first two frags that want to Titan, if they do lose this round, it's just going to demoralize them even more. And here we go. We've actually got Smith making his way onto that A-bomb site. He's going to be met by one player over there on our side at the minute, but it looks like the push is going to be coming in now towards the B-bomb site. Lots of grenades going down overall. All of the T players are actually rotating, and by the looks of things, wow. Smith has actually been able to rotate through CT spawn without Khan knowing <laughs> and has picked up a frag on the B-bomb site, guaranteeing the bomb plant. How the hell did that happen, Kaya? Well, I think he'll be fuming, to be fully honest, because Smith literally walked through an A bomb site with two CTs in it, somehow managed to go towards Arch and came around and did the CT from behind. But it's still two versus two. MBK with the AWP, he's going to get that first kill onto Khan and Zarte stuck between a rock and a very hard place and Scream doesn't miss his headshots from there. The headshot master. And it's 7-0 in favour of Titan. Encore still have enough money because of the small boost they get because they've lost so many consecutive rounds. But I think the good news for Encore fans is that this is something I've always said. French teams always tend to be really, really good on Inferno. Uh, it's sort of like football, where you have certain nationalities are good at playing one style. In Counter-Strike, you have certain nationalities whose their playing style suits certain maps. And uh, from what I've seen, CS 1.6 and CS Source, and even now in CS GO, the Frenchies always tend to do very well on Inferno. I mean, we saw Epsilon beat Virtus Throw the other day. Oh, I mean Virtus Pro, sorry. <laughs> Kappa. Very, very clever little one there, but here we go guys, we're into round number eight, and uh, number eight it is. No frags as of yet, so not really too much going on, and we can see that smoke grenade down there again over towards Banana, and Natu just spraying with his M4, seeing if he can pick up any frags whatsoever through the smoke. MBK has been knocked down to 52 HP, but that's about it. And I had a look at the scoreboard a minute ago, and wow, Existence, how did he just get that kill? Um, but uh, Disturbed is still actually yet to get a frag, and Existence only has one frag, but Kenny S, top overall with 13 to 2 at the second, so he's really performing well, as you would expect from that man. First frag, of course, did go in favour of Titan once again here, and in come the mollies, in come the flash grenades, and everything's all about to happen at once on this B-bomb site. It looks like the push is going to definitely be coming in towards there. And as you can see, Natu's the only player on top of that B-bomb site, and then we've also got Reflex just looking back from CT spawn. He's going to back away, though. And was that a fake from Titan? No, it doesn't look like it is. Here we go, Reflex. He's been smoked off here over towards CT. That's two come his way, but somehow he gets to pick through the smoke onto MBK. Natu's going to get one. Smith eventually shuts him down, and we've actually got Reflex, who is over in ruins at the minute. He's going to be that first call of response, so to speak, for Encore to try and get this bomb defused and obviously take down those three remaining Titan players players and Kenny S with that ever so important big green gun in his hand is going to get knocked down. Khan's going to get another one here. Is this the time? Khan got to get their first round on the board. Yes it is. They finally are able to retake that B-bomb site. Disturbed picks up an AWP for his hard troubles there. And 7-1 is going to be your score. Here we go. Is this the start of the comeback from Encore? They've got their first round on the board. Well, in all honesty, I don't think they can afford to lose any more rounds. Uh, if, no. uh, if they're on the more favoured half. I mean, granted, like Nip versus Hellraiser's a few months back, and we, we have seen certain occurrences as well, PC High versus Infused uh, last week at Epic Land, where for some reason the players somehow managed to turn Inferno into, t into a T-sided map, but we have to make the assumption that that's not going to happen, that everything still is vanilla, basically. So, on call, they need to win every round to stand a chance in the second half, in my opinion. I think it's going to be very difficult for them, especially against Titan in the second half, and there Ooh. you go, the kill by the Titan leader himself in existence through the smoke Onto the ex ents man in Disturbed, leaving uh, the Finns one man down. Smith is going to leapfrog his way into upper apps. And let's have a look at how the CTs are set up. We've got Natu on the B bomb site and three CTs on the A bomb site. So, Existence and MBK 
technically they should be able to infiltrate the B bomb site by themselves, but obviously it's a lot easier said than done. So here we go, Kenny S is going to peek, Arch and Kenny S does what Kenny S does best, Smith's actually peaked quad, no one's there, they know that no one's quad, Smith's comes in with the AK, great communication by Kenny S and Smith's, Kenny S realises it was someone else, Smith's his right hand man, close by, he says, yo Smith's, you have the rifle, I'm not going to be able to get this player round the corner with the AWP, come and do the dirty work, and that's exactly what Smith's did, scream, the headshot machine gets the kill onto Khan, and Encore are dropping like flies. Oh yeah, definitely. Just the way that Titan managed to take over that A-bomb site was professional in every single kind of description of the word. Smith is eventually going to get dropped by Natu, who has rotated over towards Arch, but of course now the Titan squad do know exactly where he is. Kenny S is going to completely back off from that, leaving just Existence and NBK to cover it. He's going to get spotted. Natu does actually get the second frag there, of course, which, although it looks like he's definitely going to lose this round and he's just going for exit frags here, it does mean that Titan are going to have to buy again. I don't think they're going to be too worried about that whatsoever. Eventually MBK comes around from uh, the B-bomb site and is going to finish him off. So 8-1 is going to be your confirmed score and I think that's almost pretty much the nail in the coffin considering the fact now that Titan are already seven rounds ahead and Encore here on the CT side are down to another eco. This is going to be 9-1 here going into round number 12 after that and uh, Titan are just running away with this one. You know, I used the term earlier, steamrolling, and it's becoming more and more of that factor as the game goes on, really. So, good nade towards the B-bomb site. The CT's, of course, on an eco, and we haven't really seen Encore try and utilize these uh, eco rounds. Again, we were talking earlier on about how overpowered the pistols are in uh, CSGO, especially if we can get the CZ-75. I mean, I think Encore need to try and use the element of surprise to their advantage. Obviously, no one's going to pay attention to what I'm saying because I'm not an ex-professional or anything along those lines. Um, but in all honesty, instead of, for example, that last round, um, I can't remember who it was playing the standard spot where Kenny S is always going to pre-fire. Perhaps play from here. You obviously can't see where I'm drawing, but play in a spot where the t terrorists just aren't going to look. Try and take them by surprise because that's what we've seen teams actually do to Titan in recent weeks. And it lo almost looks like Encore haven't exactly done their homework going into this game. So uh, here we go. Scream. I call him a headshot machine and he's just brilliant to watch. Gets the double. Natu's going to try and shut Smith down, but he can't. And uh, disturbed last man standing. Down he goes. And one thing I want to talk about is Smith's. I'm going to hold my hands up and say I am a Titan fan. I've, I've yeah. I come from a source background and um, I've always been a fan of, you know, very games or Titan or whatever you want to call them. But Smith's is often that one player in the lineup. Who who often doesn't get as much praise as he deserves. He's sort of that utility player who can just come in. It, he's sort of like the root founding of the team. I don't know how to explain it, but without him, I honestly think Titan would crumble. People really underestimate how much of an important factor he is. He is indeed, and MBK is going to pick up the first frag there. Reflex did have the Swag 7 in hand, but he's going to get knocked down to start things off here. So is that going to lead Titan to maybe be more favoured towards that B-bomb site? We'll have to see. Uh, we've actually got one player, which I believe is Zarte, rotating back round there from CT Spawn. As you can see in the minimap on the top left hand side. But still, players actually making their way up towards apartments. I'm not quite sure if Encore can hear them, but they are starting to get those smoke grenades down just to give them a bit of cover. And it looks like they are as disturbed as already starting to get shots down there with his FAMAS over towards that bottom door. But as soon as we do say that, the bomb's actually making its way round towards Banana. And Smith, the man on your screen, he's going to do what he did earlier on and just rotate straight round and go through Archside into CT. It looks like he's going to try and do that. Khan is going to try and stop him again. But for the second time in this first half here on Inferno, Khan has completely missed that player rotating through CT spawn. And we can see Zarte actually starting to watch over towards it. So he's going to be able to call that one out now. But, you know, that was just phenomenal how... Smith was able to do that once again. In comes the play towards the B-bomb site. Kenny S takes down Natu to start things off. The only player left now to watch four players from Titan walk into his B-bomb site is going to be Zarte. He does manage to take down Kenny S, but with four seconds left on the clock, that bomb is going to get planted. Scream takes down Disturbed, and unless Zarte and Khan can do a crazy two versus four retake and get that bomb defused in just a few seconds' time, Titan are going to put themselves into double figures.
Yeah, it's not going to be easy by any means, especially with Existence of Oranges. Zarte is going to come in, Existence pulls the trigger, Existence gets the kill, and 3 versus 1, Khan goes down. 9-1 in favour of Titan. And I'm going to highlight one thing which I from that last round, which I think, honestly, just pretty much sums up in Encore's game so far. You can't let Smith just wander through Arch and go towards CT spawn. No. I mean, I can't help but think that Titan are on their voice comms at the moment, laughing their laughing their balls off because, <laughs> even though it might not seem like that much of a of, of a big deal, it is. You you can't let someone do that, especially a player of Smith's quality. No, you certainly cannot. But they want another eco by the looks of things. And Khan is actually switched up. We've gone over towards the B bomb site. As of most of the players, the only other player from Encore who's actually on A would uh, be Zarte, I do believe it was. And Kenny S is going to be able to find Natu there with that Molly coming in. So this is just back and forth, actually. And by the looks of things, uh, they've not done a bad job here, Encore. They got aggressive onto Banana there, which I'm not quite sure Titan were expecting. And that's what I was and talking about early on when I was saying I want them to, yeah. to take them by surprise. And it's probably the most time that they've actually had control over that banana in the entire mm. game. And they were on a Nico. And they've also been able to pick up a rifle here on Reflex. So he's got to go big with this one. Problem is, is that he's actually switched over towards the A bomb site, which leaves just a CZ 7.5s against three rifles, uh, well, two and an orb, uh, on the B bomb site. So Disturbed is going to be bricking himself in this little pond right now. And he has a CZ 75. And oh, maybe I spoke, spoke a bit too soon. Reflex spraying and praying. He's going to drop the AWP Master in Kenny S, and at 2 versus 2, this is doable. Scream is going to make his way round the back of Ruins, and I think Reflex knows exactly where he is. Reflex gets his second of the round, and now 2 versus 1, Smiths, while I was praising him. Let's see if he's going to live up to that praise, and he's not, and that was the eco round, Chewy. Yeah. It was, but in all honesty, although that's very impressive and Reflex did go absolutely mad. You have to there, wonder if it's a bit too late now. Yeah, exactly, exactly what yeah. I was about to say. I, I do think it is a bit too late. It was you know, great, and I don't want to take anything away from it because, number one, it was an eco. Number two, we saw them take control of Banana with pistols and managed to pick up that all-important AK-47. And that just shows... You know, if you pick up one rifle there and you've got a guy who's accurate with it, that mm -hmm. could be the defining difference. So it didn't matter that Titan had the bomb down, had control of the B bomb site. As soon as Reflex was, you know, picking up headshots with that AK, that was the round over and securing Encore their second round of the game. But unfortunately, I do believe that they can do something pretty damn miraculous. That uh, is going to be too little too late for them. They have obviously been able to buy up again here, so let's see what they can do heading into round number 30. We go existence the leader leading the titan lions into charge towards the b bomb site but uh, no scream as a matter of fact has the uh, bomb on the a bomb site so he's just gonna flash his teammate into apps and the frenchies try to take control of apps and we're starting to see this more passive play come out from encore again and i guess you know i think i've said enough uh, about this passive play i don't think it's worked for them so far they want to, to they seem ass assertive they want to carry on doing it um Maybe they have, they have something up their sleeves. I'm not too sure. But the, the surprising thing is that Encore just aren't random. You know what I mean? Disturbed, Natu. These are these are the all-powerful Ents players. And to be losing 10-2 as it stands right now, it's a bit embarrassing. But maybe, just maybe, they'll be able to turn it around if they have a good T-side. And, well, they just make it look very easy, Chewy. They really do. And I, I just don't know what more to say about Encore. They're playing the same position in quad every time. They're playing the same position in Arch every time. They're keeping someone either in apps or, or on pit. It's too easy for players of Titan's quality. They're predicting it and they're walking into these bomb sites knowing exactly what their opponents are doing. Yeah. And I, I've got to say, I know it sounds really simple of me here, and you know we've got so much to take into account, especially on a map like Inferno. You know the different places that you hold, the different tactics that come into play. There's obviously so much tactically that goes into a game of Counter Strike. But let's not forget, right on a simple basic point here, that this is a first-person shooter game. Shooting does kind of lead to the thought that you should be getting kills. Wow. And Zarte and Disturbed, in all 13 rounds that we've played so far, have only got three frags between them. I know that isn't the most essential thing potentially mm. ever, but still, that's not good enough, especially on the CT side here. Three frags in 13 rounds between two-fifths of your team, that's just simply not good enough. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. I can't really argue with that. Yeah, it hasn't been good enough, and I've, I'm really sat here with hand on my mouth and my fingers crossed that because I really want to see this go to a third map. I really want Encore to push Titan to the limit because we know Titan aren't currently 
at their best based on what we've seen so far. But here we go. They're going aggressive again on this eco round. Not as much as before, but maybe Reflex can deal a bit of damage with the Deagle. Oh, leaves MBK a dead man walking on 3 HP. But 3 HP is plenty for a player of MBK's caliber. And Zarte is going to be the man to try and rotate over to the B-bomb site because... Two players down on B. I'm surprised that Titan didn't push it, but maybe they'll have it in their in in their heads that hold on a second. Encore have stacked B before. They have stacked it with three or four players. Maybe it's just sort of some sort of eco strategy they have in the bag. Zarte goes aggressive, picked off by existence. Down goes Khan, and it really is starting to look like a lost cause, Chewy. Oh yeah, it is indeed, and of course we've got to remind ourselves and be, you know, equal as Kyle as I know both myself and Kyle are fans of Titan, but you know we, we want to remain even. We said that we also want the underdogs to, you know, to come in and have a really good fight here mm. and potentially take this one. But just with the way that Titan are kind of steamrolling this, I can't see it happening. It's evidently not going to happen in the first game here unless something absolutely crazy happens but unfortunately I don't think it will um, and you know with that being said I, I wouldn't be surprised if Titan just 2-0'd this best of three because of the momentum that they're going to take through. We've actually seen Encore here going with a double AWP setup and Khan with the swag seven as we like to call it um, so let's see if they can do anything whether the swag is going to lead to any more luck for these guys from Finland but as things stand Titan only four rounds away from confirming the first map in this best of three series against the French and the Finnish. And we're into the last round of the first half. And Reflex, there we go. That's the first flag onto MBK. We've got a Famas kill onto Smiths uh, as well. So um, this is looking good here for Encore. If they choke this 5 versus 3 situation, then yeah, I'm going to call GG's already, I'm afraid. Go disturbed. It's definitely heard scream. Making uh, a bit of noise in the second mid. Oh, disturbed just timed it poorly. And scream is going to run away. Or is he? No, he wants to face. Let's see what he can do. We know he's good. We know he's very good. We know he's a headshot machine. But he does have Khan Swag 7 to try and deal with. And Khan, he fired a few bullets at him but thought, no, long distance. I'm not going to be able to get this kill with the Swag 7. And uh, just a little side note there for you guys, I'm sorry to distract away from this game, but just confirmation that Epsilon are 9-0 down against Copenhagen Wolves on Nuke at the second. Copenhagen Wolves are on the CT side, but still Epsilon haven't picked up a round. So just a little side track there from the game which we're bringing you, but it's all going to be left up to Scream and Kenny S. Make that just Kenny S here. And this is the first round that we've seen so far where Encore haven't had a single player lost. Kenny S could still do some damage here. And as soon as I do say that, Kenny S is going to finish one up. But finally, Encore finish with a high note of some form if you can try and class it that third round on the board for them as only Zarte was the player to go down in that 15th round but still overall confirmation of the score at the halfway mark it's going to be 12 to 3 in favor of Titan and if they win this pistol round here that's just going to be game over before it really gets into the rifle rounds pretty much isn't it pretty much um, there's no doubt about it Encore need to win the pistol round and um, we mentioned it early on about how how how, e how much easier it's becoming on CSGO for the terrorists to win the pistol round on be Inferno or even maps like Nuke and Encore in my opinion I'm not sure what the exact statistics are but my guess is around 67% of the pistol rounds on Inferno probably do go in favor of the terrorists so if Encore blow that one then I hate to sound biased, but I think it'll be game over for them. Mm. Not game over, sorry, map over. The second map, guys, is going to be Mirage. Um, and should we need a third map, and fingers crossed we are going to need a third map, we'll be going to uh, Nuke. And Nuke will be a really interesting map, because we know Titan are good on Nuke, but I'm not really sure what to expect from the Finns on Nuke, because they are a new lineup kind of thing. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we'll have to see indeed, but just with the way that things have been going so far, it's going to be very difficult to put a stop to uh, the French train of Titan. They've really just been absolutely dominating here on this first side of Inferno, and we can see, unfortunately, we can't see existence score, although I do believe he was somewhere in the they, middle. They've, uh, two scoreboard. players have disconnected. Yeah, yeah Existence is restarting his game. Yeah, Existence, yeah, I saw that. He's got to restart, so he should be about two minutes or so, so it shouldn't be too long uh, before we get going once again. But on that note, thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. We are just about to 
hit 6,000 viewers, which is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, this is the first time me and Kai and I have casted in quite a while, and it looks like we're going to be casting again very, very soon. Indeed, of course, next weekend, if you aren't aware, it is going to be the Gfinity G3 tournament in London, which we are both going to be attending, so the Chewy Knight duo will be there. Uh, but all the same, it's good to be back on Kai Knight's channel. It's good to be back just chilling out, casting some good Counter-Strike. And all that would really be great now is if you could all tweet out the stream and make sure that you get as many friends in here as possible. And also, if uh, the rest of Encore give us a good game now. Yeah, and someone like Silent Riot 808. Yeah, I've said your name. Um, in chat is actually saying it's talking about how how the underdogs always seem to be winning these games. It is. It from what we've seen in ESL so far. Like yesterday, we saw London Conspiracy beat both Kick and Navi. Who would have expected that? Mm. Um, what other upsets did we see? What can I remember? That's going to be big again. Sorry, think, sorry to just, that's going to be fine. big again. Thinking about G3, London Conspiracy, one of those teams which a lot of people thought coming into that. Okay, they're a qualifier. They may not do too much, but mm. I know it's online and on land and those two different things. But that Norwegian team can pack a punch, as we saw yesterday. So you never quite know. They can bring up some upsets, but yeah big upsets coming in overall uh, over the past few days, which is exactly what we want to see. It changes things up so often, and it's a reason why I love Counter-Strike. It's kind of one of the main reasons why I switched from my previous eSports title on to this one, just because of the amount of upsets that we can see on a weekly basis. And what was your previous eSports title, if you don't mind? Let's not it. talk about that. Thank you very much. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> this is the half. Guys, he used to cast COD. Oh, thank you so Call of much. Duty Let's is what he used to cast. Let's just go hashtag blame Chewy in the chat. We haven't had one for a while, so yes. Kai Knight has to bring it up again. I swear we do every single broadcast. God. Call I'm of Duty? Sorry. I switched You'd been better PC off casting Master FIFA, race. dude. No, but honestly, uh, I mean, I was casting with Two Face yesterday, and this was something that we found worked quite well, and people in the chat enjoyed it. Where when we've got a strange pause like this, we basically just said, guys, ask us questions in the chat, and we'll just answer yeah. them. Yeah. So, guys. Go ahead and just ask any random questions you want. And uh, assuming existence is still going to be away for for the next uh, minute or so. Uh, hey, we got a new subscriber, Berat Kogludududu. Thanks for subscribing, dude. Really appreciate it. Um, we 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 are actually going to have a giveaway. Um, not right now, but it's going to be a bit of a longer giveaway. But I can't discuss it right now. I'll discuss it at the end of the game. Just virginity. Okay, there's the first question. Are you homophobic? Are you homophobic, Chewy? No, I'm most no, definitely not. No, I'm I'm not either. Um, you shouldn't have asked that. You should have said, "Ask us some questions in the chat." Let's ask. No, no, no someone questions. asked it in the chat. Okay. Do we even? Yeah, lift? But, then we, but then we get questions along that. So, so, so there we go. Look, everybody. So now everybody bashing me for being a podcaster. That's absolutely fine. I will accept that because I know it's despicable. Um, but I've moved on from my ways. Otherwise, I would actually be in an event right now in Blackpool. Instead, lovely Blackpool of all places to have a, a LAN event, right? Um, hmm. But I would be casting there instead of on your lovely screen. So just take that into account. I'm not quite sure whether you'd rather have me there or here, but all the same. And it looks like we can stop talking about that rubbish and get back into the second half, can't I? Yeah, um, some interesting questions definitely in chat. Many of which I would like to answer, but I don't think ESL would approve if... Uh... I were to uh, <laughs> answer some of these and they end up uh, being thrown onto the VOD. But here we go. We said how important this pistol round is going to be for the Finns. And if you ask me, you know what, Chewie? I think they can do it. Here we go. Zarte and Natu, in fact, four of the Finns are going to go towards it. Oh, pinpoint need from Titan. And they knew exactly what to expect. They've stacked Arch. But the Glocks Ooh. at the moment are reigning supreme. Zarte and Natu both on the score sheet as the clock ticks down. The bomb needs to go down. All the Titan Ooh. players have rotated from B. B is completely empty. The bomb is down. Three versus three. And all Encore have to do now is just play it cool, calm and collected and just not face. I've had to close the chat on the stream because some of the questions being asked have made me just cringe. But anyway, back into the game we go. So three versus three is things down. And Encore have been able to plant the bomb. So even if they do lose this round, they're going to be happy about that. But it doesn't look like they are. With the way that Exarte's picked up another headshot down to the screen. Kenny S responds. Exarte, uh, sorry, Exarte has gone down. I do apologise. So that's going to lead things on to a 2v2. A bomb's going to blow up any second there. So this will be the first pistol round. Uh, well, second pistol round, technically. And the bell goes off. <laughs> the bell goes off. off. <laughs> I love that bell. It just, it just finishes everything <laughs> off. It just, I don't know what it is about it. It's just a certain tone of it. It's just kind of like a sense of achievement has been found because the bell was wrong for you. But 412 uh, is your I'm sport. not sure if you can still do it in CSGO with the bells at T-Spawn. In CS Source, there was a, if you shot at them, 
in a certain pattern. You'd be able to play Mary Had a Little Lamb on them. It was brilliant. <laughs> oh you'd, you'd, you'd always, every time I'd be sat in T-Spawn, there'd always be that one guy who'd be playing with their Glock or something and shooting at the bells. Ding, 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 ding. It's only like three notes, but still, that is quite yeah, you're, 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 Yeah, you see, you're like a musician. I'm not really into all that music stuff. So... To me, it seems like, wow, Mary had a little lamb on Inferno. But anyways, let's forget Mary had a little lamb. Um, because Encore did exactly what we wanted them to do. They won the pistol round. Now they have the bigger weapons. Kalashnikovs and Gilils in hand. So here we go. Let's have a look at how Titan are going to take on this uh, anti-eco. They've, uh, in fact, four of them have bought CZ-75s, bar existence himself. Disturbed, slowly creeping up banana. Hopefully he won't get in the way of that chicken, because I'm not sure if he'll make a bit of noise. Be, be like, get out of my way. And the Titan players will know they're there. And it's really interesting, actually. We're starting to see Titan do what we saw Encore do to them, where they're giving them a lot of breathing space. We, in fact, saw the Finns check arch, check quad. Notice no one was there. They realize they're all going to be playing really passive and deep from, uh, from back long. And now they've all rotated over to Banana. And you'd really expect them from this point, due to the fact that they have AKs and Galils, even though two CZ-75s in Smith's stream are on the B-bomb site, the Galils should always win, but they've actually run past two of them. Scream goes down, so does Smith's, and surely now the bomb is going to go down behind the fountain. And I'll tell you what, as long as Encore don't do what um, Neo was doing the other day, sitting in the fountain and playing with the fish uh, for Virtus Pro, I mean Virtus Pro, then I think they should be okay. Yeah, indeed, they should be. So uh, it's all going to be left up to MBK existence and Kenny S. I'm not even sure. Well, it looks like they may just be trying to think of a few exit frags, but with uh, just a few CZ75s in hand, it doesn't look like too much is going to come from this round for them, which means that the Finns are going to get their fifth round on the board here. They're exiting away from that bomb site now. MBK is just going to be around the corner, and so is Kenny S. looking for those exit frags, but Encore look like they know where they're going to be. And Zarte is on 10 HP. He's not going to die, though. MBK is going to get picked off to finish things off. So does Kenny S. Existence is the only survivor, but he's literally just got a P250, so it's really not going to be too much of an issue for them. And Titan aren't going to be getting worried yet. You know, we hit, mm. okay, yes, they've got to get another pistol round here, which should mean, unless they can do uh, something pretty cool, that it will be 12-6. Uh, but all the same, uh, they've just got that heavy round advantage here, and then they will be able to buy rifles, and they are on the CT side here. So here we go into round number 18. Once again, Galil's and AKs is the name of the game, as you would expect here for the finish side. And having a look at this CT setup here, four players from Titan on the B-bomb site, which would you think may lead to them standing a bit of a chance here, but of course then if that means that Encore go over to A, that will already be confirmation pretty much of the sixth round on the board there for Encore, unless uh, they can do a four-man retake on A, which would be uh, pretty phenomenal with pistols against uh, those those big rifles in the Galil and the AK. And by the looks of things, the attention from the T side is actually switching over towards A here, Kaya. So uh, the man on your screen, MBK, could be in a lot of trouble very quickly. Yeah, but we know he's good. We know someone earlier on in warm up was mentioning that MBK is the CZ master, the CZ yeah, champion. I saw that. Yeah. yeah, so you know what? Let's go over to MBK and let's see what he can do. He is hiding. Well, oh, that's a lovely CZ 75, isn't it? The Tiger one. Uh, but no, I think I, I really still prefer my, my, my white one. I'm more of a minimalist. But anyways, here we go. Flashes and smokes being catapulted towards this A-bomb site and well Encore giving Titan a bit of a taste of their own medicine they push around Arch and instead of going to CT spawn they're wrapping around this bomb site what can MBK do he oh no he's missed his shots and he only has six bullets remaining he falls to his death and now are Titan going to save these pistols or are they going to actually try and retake the bomb site because of course Kenny has to CZ does cost a bit of money Existence's P250 does cost a bit of money and by the looks of things I think they just might try and save yeah, I think so by the looks of things. I mean, I'm not really too sure if it's worth, again, giving money to Uncle Hill. Though obviously they're going to get money uh, for planting the bomb and, and it blowing up and everything like that. That extra money that they may just get for frags could lead to, to, to various things. Probably not exactly too much of a difference, but still, if they can, you know, stay alive, then all of a sudden that'll be good. Existence is going to push through the smoke and instantly get ploughed down uh, with 7.62mm bullets from that AK-47 into his chest, as it would be if it was real life, of course. And there we go. Now, Uncle Core. Only six rounds behind. I say only six rounds, but here we go. We've got the rifles coming in from Titan now. One thing, oh, uh, sorry to cut, cut you out. No, One thing I want to mention go. is that CS is such a momentum game, and now that Encore have won those first three rounds, if they can win this one, this, in my opinion, to make it 12 7 will be the difference whether they'll come back into the game or not. Yeah. 
It's just that I kind of think there's that kind of... I don't know why. I don't know if it's just me. I've not really mentioned it before because I thought it was just me that thought about it. But 12-6, mm. I think mentally, has a lot of difference to 12-7. I don't quite it know does, why. Does, yeah. And so many people are probably going to think I'm weird with that. No, no, it but does. for some reason, 12-6 and 12-7 just seem world apart. It's, I can't it's a bit like why, when you're on the terrorist side and you uh, and the difference between 11-4 and 10-5. It is such a massive difference. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I can't I can't quite explain why the difference between six and seven feels so different to me, mm -hmm. but hey ho, into round number nineteen we go and as we've said, Titan first rifle round for them here in the second half of Inferno. This is as we've mentioned before, a best of three, so even if Encore do lose this first game, they're going to have two more chances to bring it back at the French team. And Kenny has, has been able to pick up that all. He is looking over here from Archside, which is, as far as I'm aware, his usual position. And he's going to get flashed there as um, Khan tries to push in towards that A bomb site. And they have been able to do so, forcing Kenny S right back to library. So this is good here. But already, we've actually seen a couple of players heading down Banana here. So is this going to be what happened earlier on? But in with three players going through, and it looks like it could be. Kenny S is completely smoked off. And we saw Khan making mistakes earlier on, letting people push through Archside. And that was just one. Kenny S has let three people slip past him. And they are just going to get absolutely bamboozled here on the B-bomb site. Six seconds left, the bomb is going to go down. Scream is the first to fall and out of nowhere, Encore just played a phenomenal T-side push here. Kenny S eventually tries to respond. He does get one frag just to try and bring back... Uh, wow, that's a big frag there as well. It's all going to be left up to Natu and Khan and it's all going to be left up to Khan now with just that AK-47 in the hand in a one versus three. He's got a huge amount of work to do here. He's going to be able to pick up one, tries to pick up the second. Existence is going to finish him off though and my god, what a 19th round there, Khan. And I, I love to analyse that one full, but I think we'd be here all night. That was a great round. Well, I think Encore were five versus three at one point. They, they were. They, 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 they did the hard thing. They got the bomb down. But that's what Titan do to you. You make one tiny weeny mistake, and Titan will punish you. They have the quality in their lineup to punish you. Now, the good news is that because Encore won the pistol round, because they won the second round, because they won the, the, the third round, they do still have enough money to buy, despite losing that last round. So 13-7, game on. 14-6, yeah. mm, maybe not so much, but we know Encore can do it. They did the hard thing last time around, they planted the bomb, and Titan have only gone and put three players on the B bomb site. So what do you think of that, Chewie? I think it's interesting, but another point, Silvis in the chat actually pointed this out to show, shout out to you my friend, why didn't Encore smoke off CT there? I'm not sure if they had any smokes, but they should have at least saved one for that. After wrapping around there, they obviously had that play in mind for quite a while, otherwise it wouldn't have quite played off how it did, but they pushed around, got that bomb down onto B, and then in all honesty, I think a simple smoke in this position where Smith just was there towards CT spawn, you know, the typical smoke position to cover off CT spawn, that could have pretty much almost guaranteed the round there for Encore in that last round. But enough of 19th round, let's go into round number 20. MBK is going to pick off the first kill there on to the finish man of Reflex. It's going to be an MBK actually picks up the Sakamon Kenny S with the third. Wow. Eventually Natu and Zate responding. Three versus two situation is thing is stand. Existence right on top of that A bomb site is going to get knocked down to 15 HP. And this is all going to be left up in the hands of Nartu. He gets knocked down. That was a very quick round indeed. 14 6 confirmed. And Titan two rounds away from guaranteeing themselves the first map in this best of three, Kyle. Yeah, just to clarify something, um, we do use Auto Director. And the reason we use Auto Director, um, or the reason I use Auto Director when Chewie is casting, is because I need to make sure what he sees on his screen is what I am streaming to you guys. So apologies if Auto Director catches some poor It annoys stuff. us just as much as it annoys exactly, you. Exactly, exactly. We're watching exactly the same thing as you. It just makes yeah. it so much easier than every time we switch on with a new player, we have to call it out. It's so annoying when you have to do that. So Auto Director kind of just eliminates us repeating ourselves every three seconds when we switch players. Because it'd be so awkward as well if I'm, for example, watching Khan and you're talking about MBK doing something yeah, on the opposite bomb Yeah, that happens so much in, in other esports where they don't have this kind of thing available. It just happens all the time. Mm. So uh, this just makes life so much easier. So everybody hates Auto Director, but believe me, if you're involved with other esports, you realise how much of a godsend it can be for uh, online casting. But here we go. Push comes in towards the B bomb site, and they've actually got it cleared here, Kai. So the retake once again is going to have to come in from Titan, and now they've got that smoke down onto CT. Flashes go down as well, and this is going to be a bit more difficult than the last time here for Titan. Yeah, especially with MBK shotgun and Chewy, they're just running away. And oh, hello, Natu is playing the get right flanking role. Oh, MBK in the head trades the shotgun for an AK, and I don't think MBK, not MBK. 
Titan will be too downheartened with losing this round. I hope Encore can escape with their weapons. They should be able to. I don't think they'll be too downheartened. They'll know that it's 14-7. They'll know that they've still got two times as many rounds as their opponents and that they only need two more rounds to actually win the game. So, there we go. 14-7. But Encore, they planted. They have enough money to buy. I think even if they were to lose this round and Titan would put the game at match point, they might be able to still force the buy. So it's far from game over. Oh yeah, it definitely is indeed. And I've got to give it up uh, to the players on uh, uh, Encore. Didn't have the best round. You know, we talked about frags earlier on, and of course, frags isn't necessarily the most essential thing in some ways. I guess that doesn't quite make sense, but still, uh, you have uh, you have different roles, like the guy who's yeah, in charge of all exactly. the smokes, all the exactly. flashes. But Zarte was, I think, one in eleven, and now he's ten and seventeen. So although that's obviously still not the best, it's definitely an improvement. And this is the first time we've seen four players stacked up here from Encore in in, um, in apartments. I do believe. The first good. line in that defense is going to be existent. He's going to get that first shot there into Natu, and that could be the stop already. Have a look at this. They've just cleaned them up, and they've hardly taken a single bit of damage. Existence gets knocked down to 34, but oh my gosh, Titan, that's the way you hold A, ladies and gentlemen. Textbook work from them. <laughs> Textbook work indeed. Uh, for a second, I thought Existence was going to let him slip through when he started spraying, but fortunately, he, uh, he QQ'd it and sorted his recoil out. And MBK as well to his left, and uh, he was there as uh, as backup as well. So here we go, Encore, it's do or die, it's now or never. We said they might be able to force the buy, and we only have three AK 47s out, so I think Encore will be trying to mentally, because CS is such a mental game as well, trying to mentally prepare themselves and think. Right, okay, we probably lost this map. We'll go into Mirage. We know we can win it. I think Mirage was, in fact, Encore's pick. I'll check it for everyone. But let's forget about the second map because, hey, we're still on Inferno. And Encore might still be able to pull this one out the bag. But I'll tell you what, that bag is extremely deep. I'm not sure if Encore might go to CT. Oh, oh Natu oh. at horse. Drops Kenny. Yes, Scream, the headshot machine, is going to try and rotate through the smoke. But no headshots from him just yet. Smith comes from behind. Drops Disturbed. And it's all kicking off here on the A bomb sighting. Can Encore save this round at least? It looks like they are going to as MBK and Smith both are sent back all the way to CT spawn. We're going to have Natu watching quad. Scream on Arch. Existence. What? Where is Existence? It looks like Existence. Oh! Existence gets one! He should be able to get two! Yes he can! And Existence. People. A lot of people don't rate him. Scream gets one. It's Scream to win the game for the Frenchies. Can Scream do it? I think if he can you're going to have a big sacre bleu out of me knows exactly where Zarte is and Scream gets it Scream will defuse and the players are calling GG and I'll tell you what Titan won that round in style that was absolutely amazing that was one of the best rounds I think